The dream of ultra-fast aircraft capable of crossing continents in just a couple of hours is not a new one. However, today we're closer than ever before to actually making it a reality. While Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and other aviation giants are working on expanding the production of American hypersonic missiles, Boom Technology with their supersonic demonstrator XB-1 is trying to bring passenger flights to a practical level. But will this device be safe and stable enough? And most importantly, are we ready for such technologies? We invite you to come with us and find out. Once upon a time, aerospace historian Richard P. Hallian, a founding curator at the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum, very aptly noted that faith in the hypersonic future and its unconditional acceptance is akin to faith in the second coming. A person knows and believes that it will happen, but is not sure when exactly. Over the past 60 years, hypersonic vehicles and weapons programs have come and gone, and the field has gone through many cycles of interest and growing optimism, followed by pessimism, decline, and then a slow return of interest. Moreover, for about 40 of these 60 years, the hypersonics lobby had extremely strained and ambivalent relations with the military. Military officials responsible for force structure and combat operations recognized that hypersonic vehicles and weapons had their merits. However, serious technological problems, first associated with rocket engines and protection against re-entry, and then followed by even more complex problems with air-breathing engines, only encouraged the postponement of work on hypersonic technology in favor of a replacement strategy involving the development of more traditional types of combat aircraft, missiles, and other types of weapons. In short, the uncharted territory of hypersonics looked especially unattractive against the backdrop of the urgent need to develop traditional fighters and bombers to counter the aggressive Soviet state. This mixture of conflicting interest and disdain for the new prevailed throughout the Cold War, but then hypersound was much more of a practical and achievable solution than it was in earlier periods. Although, after the development of maneuvering warheads for ballistic missiles and the practical demonstration of atmospheric entry by the space shuttle, hypersound has nevertheless become more attractive to the American military and authorities. Moreover, both before and after the Gulf War, the growing ability to develop hypersonic weapons, whether conventional or nuclear, or long-range standoff missions requiring rapid response, promised to fundamentally transform aerospace power projection. Kevin Bocut, chief scientist for hypersonics at Boeing and creator of the original concept design for unmanned research scramjet experimental aircraft X-51 Waverider, rightly noted that there was this old saying that hypersonics was the future and always would be. Now people believe it. It's real. Nowadays, attention to the hypersonics industry is indeed at its peak. The reason for this is another arms race between superpowers. Only if earlier the essence of the race was who would be the first to reach alien life, now the heart of the issue is the ability to quickly disable any and all enemy systems, or at least restraining the irrepressible ambitions of certain dictators. The Pentagon sees hypersonic weapons as nothing less than a game changer that could give the United States or its adversaries an advantage comparable to that provided by smart bombs and stealth aircraft in decades past. To develop functional hypersonic technology, the U.S. will need the best engines capable of operating at the highest speeds, as well as the most resilient materials that can withstand the extreme temperatures encountered at these very high speeds. The costs of such research and development are expected to be cosmic, so before spending entire helicopters and American taxpayer dollars on hypersonic travel, major U.S. aircraft manufacturers and NASA are turning their attention to startups seeking to innovate supersonic travel. After all, even a small team of enthusiasts can make a revolution in the field of supersonic and hypersonic flights for a reasonable price, after which the most successful of these developments will be used in the defense industry. One of the most promising startup innovators in this direction is Boom Technology, whose team, led by Blake Scholl, CEO, and Josh Kral, CTO, is creating our very future with you all today. We're talking about Baby Boom, better known as the XB-1, a one-third scale supersonic prototype with three jet engines. The first step towards the development of Boom Technologies' magnum opus is a supersonic passenger airliner, the Boom Overture. 
Almost 50 years have passed since the first flight of the legendary Concorde, capable of taking you from New York to London in three and a half hours at a speed of more than Mach 2. It would seem that half a century is behind us, but only in the last decade have we finally been able to come close to eliminating one of the main enemies of supersonic speed, the loud sonic boom, the roar created by all aircraft breaking the sound barrier. Boom was originally planned to achieve a cruising speed of Mach 2.2 to match transoceanic airline timetables and allow higher utilization while keeping airport noise levels at level 4, comparable to classic long-range subsonic aircraft. However, in the end, they decided to concentrate on maintaining the overture speed at Mach 1.7. For comparison, this is twice the speed of modern passenger airliners. The Boom team approached solving the noise problem in a very non-trivial way. The future Overture aircraft, designed for 64 to 80 passengers depending on configuration, will follow 600 flight routes over water, breaking the sound barrier just above it so that the sound booms do not reach land. Over land, Overture will fly at speeds of about Mach 0.94 without breaking the sound barrier and still outperforming its subsonic commercial colleagues from Boeing, Airbus, and others by more than 20%. Additionally, in the future, the Boom Technology team can use the Quiet Boom developments from NASA, which is actively testing a new experimental supersonic vehicle, the X-59 Quiet Supersonic Technology, also known as Quest. But before we dream about the final overture, with the first passenger flight planned for 2029, let's still return to Baby Boom. The project was presented back in November of 2016, after which it was intended to carry out its first subsonic flight before the end of next year from Edwards Air Force Base, California. Moreover, by the spring of 2017, the company had received the necessary funding to build and launch the XB-1. The XB-1 measures up to 68 feet in length, which is even longer than the Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor fighter jet, which comes in at a more modest 62 feet in length. But with a wingspan of 17 feet, the supersonic vehicle does not even come close to the brand new F-35 Lightning II, also from Lockheed, which sports a modest 35 feet. However, the swept wings of the baby boom are not simply the whim of some engineer, but rather due to the stubborn laws of physics. Pressure waves form in front of the aircraft as it accelerates in the air until they coalesce into a strong shock wave. Those shock waves, which are responsible for sonic booms, generate drag as they interact with aircraft surfaces. It's called wave drag, and it increases resistance by 50%, 100%, or even more. This is what requires the XB-1's three engines, the General Electric J8515 with variable geometry air intakes and exhaust pipes, to produce equivalent thrust to counteract supersonic drag and maintain flight. The task of the Boom Technology Specialist was to minimize this effect by individually designing the device from nose to tail. This, in fact, is where the wing sweep legs grow, as well as their small thickness, which reduces the cross-sectional area and wave resistance. The main body materials of the XB-1 are lightweight composites, titanium and stainless steel, materials for the hot leading edges and nose operating at 307 degrees fahrenheit as well as epoxy materials for the cooler parts of boom were provided by dutch 10k advanced composites which previously supplied high temperature materials for spacex's notorious falcon 9. the basis of the baby boom glider is intermediate modulus carbon fiber epoxy with high modulus fibers for the wing spar caps and bismalamide prepeg for the high temperature leading edges and ribs the rear fuselage, which houses the engines, is made of 90% titanium, with the remaining 10% made from A286 stainless steel, an iron-based super alloy used in applications that require high strength and corrosion resistance at insane temperatures of up to 1300 degrees Fahrenheit and even higher levels. The Thermoregulation Environmental Control System uses the fuel as a radiator to absorb cabin heat and the XB-1's engines are powerful enough to fly up to 1,200 miles at speeds up to Mach 2.2. By the way, the designers intend to use J-85 only on a demonstrator. In Overture, these will be replaced by Boom Technology's own turbofan engine called Symphony. The team's announcement came shortly after the big three engine makers, Rolls-Royce, Pratt & Whitney, and General Electric, as well as CFM and Safran, abandoned the idea of developing a new engine citing high costs. 
Assisting in the development of Symphony will be Kratos Florida Turbine Technologies FTT, subsidiary, which will undertake some of the design work. Standard Aero, which will carry out maintenance of the engine as well as General Electric subsidiary GE Addictive, which agreed to advise Boom Technology on printing components. By the way, the FTT team included specialists who were previously responsible for the Pratt & Whitney F-119 and F-135 engines, which were installed in the American F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II fighters. The thrust of the new engines will increase greatly in the future from 12,900 pound-feet for the baby boom to 140,000 pound-feet for the Overture, where each of the four Symphony engines will provide 35,000 pound-feet at takeoff. Although the first flight was originally planned for 2021, the massive pandemic and increased testing pushed those plans back until March of 2024 when Baby Boom was able to stretch its wings for the first time, marking a major milestone in Boom Technology's supersonic roadmap. In 2023, the team received its airworthiness certificate from the Federal Aviation Administration, completed an extensive flight readiness review, and successfully executed a series of integrated ground and taxi tests. However, before reaching the required supersonic speed, the XB-1 will have to complete 10 subsonic flights, the 7th and 8th of which took place quite recently in early November of this year. During said flight, the aircraft managed not only to set a personal speed record of 629 miles per hour or about Mach 0.82 at an altitude of more than 25,000 feet, but also once again defy the skeptics, confirming the stability of the structure at high speeds. So unless some critical changes occur in the plans, the team intends to close its milestone in the form of the 10th flight and break the sound barrier, reaching a speed of Mach 1 by the end of 2024. Many are also interested in the price tag for one overture, especially given the fact that major market players, United Airlines and Japan Airlines, have already pre-ordered 15 and 20 of these aircraft, respectively. So preliminary, it ranges from 200 to 250 million, which taking into account the price of the entire XB-1 project in the region of $200 million, looks like a very impressive amount. And remembering that the price of tickets for Concorde in the 1990s was up to $10,000, or about $20,000 taking into account inflation today, the dream of the CEO of Boom Technology about the ability to fly anywhere in the world in four hours and $100 still resembles something bordering on science fiction, just like super fast passenger flights in the middle of last century, right? What do you think? Will the Boom team be able to bring supersonic transportation to mass adoption? Or are we still not ready for such progress? Be sure and share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.